I'm Meghna. Today I'm handling your C++ tutorial. C++ is a general purpose programming language created by a Braun Ostro. As an extension to a C programming language, it is considered as a most important and basic requirement to understand the object-oriented style of programming language. In C++ tutorial, we shall understand the few things. Today's agenda of this tutorial are you are going to learn about input-output function, comments, variables, identifiers, constants, data types, operator, string, switch statement, loops, arrays, reference, pointer, dereference, conditional statement and break and continue statement. So, what is C++? C++ is a cross-platform language that can be used to create a high-performance application. C++ was developed by Barn Strostrup as an extension to the C language. C++ gives a programmer a high level of control over system resources and memory. The language was updated three major times in 2011, 2014 and 2017 to a C++11, C++14 and C++17. Why we use a C++? You might get this question. C++ is one of the world's most popular programming language. C++ can be found in today's operating system, graphical user interface and embedded system. C++ is an object-oriented programming language which gives a clear structure to a program and allows a code to be reused which lowers the development cost. C++ is a portable and can be used to develop an application that can be adapted to multiple platform. C++ is a fun and overall it's very easy to learn. As C++ is a close to a C and Java, it makes it very easy for a programmer to a switch to a C++ or a vice versa. We are going to Xenia.io official site to run the code. Now first let us execute today's first program where I will be explaining you about the structure of C++ with the syntax. This is the official site which I was talking about. This is a Xenia.io where here you will be executing the program. First let me write the first program to display the hello world obviously you know that. Just a second. Once I write the program, I will be explaining you what are all those things. Hash include IO stream using namespace std semicolon come down main function open the parenthesis c out will be the output over here in case of c language it was a printf you can watch my tutorial returning the zero value done okay so I will be explaining you by breaking each line. Just concentrate. So first line one. First let me run the code. Click on run. You can see the hello word printing over the right side in the console. So in line one, hash include IO stream. You can see. It's a header file library that gets us work that let us work with the input and output objects such as a c out which i have used in the line 5 over here c out header files add a functionality to a c++ program in the line 2 it's a using namespace std which means that we can use the names for an object and a variable from the standard library don't worry if you don't understand how ash include io stream and using namespace std works. Just think of it as 
much. Just think of it as something that always appears in your program. That's it. In a line 3, you can just give a blank space like this. A blank line. C++ ignores a whatever it is. White space or whatever it is. If you didn't give also, it works. Another thing that always appears in a C++ program is int me. This is called a function. Any code inside its curly braces will get executed. In the line 5, C out is an object used together with the insertion operator. This is an insertion operator. Here you can see two lesser than symbol. Now it is an insertion operator to print a text or to give an output. In our example, it is printing a hello world over here. Every C++ statement ends with a semicolon. Just remember this. The body of int me could also be written as like this. I'll show you how can you write the body of the int me again. Maybe take this as an int me. You can also write like this. Open parenthesis now. Over here. See out. You can write everything in the same line itself. Doesn't matter. Like this. The compiler ignores a white space. However, multiple line makes the code more readable. Instead of like this, multiple lines of code will become easy for the user to understand. Return 0 ends with a main function. Do not forget to add a closing curly braces to actually and end the main function. Now I'll just you briefly explain a C++ input and a output. C++ output that is a printing the text. C out. I told you about this C out. Now the C out object together with the insertion operator over here is used to output a value or a print a text. You can see over here the same example I can give. You can add as many C out object as you want. However, note that it does not insert a new line at the end of the output. See here, for example, over here below, take one more C out, lesser than, lesser than, print writer, I'm learning a C++ semicolon. Now I'll run the code and show you the output. The output will be like this. Hello world and I am learning C++. It doesn't look good. So we need to insert, an, insert a new line here. You can use a backward slash n operator over here. Wherever you want to give a new line. Insert the backward slash n operator. Now you can just run the code and check. It will be like this. Another way to insert a new line is with the end l. Okay. Here you can give an end l operator and insert a new line. Instead of backward slash n, go here. Give like this. Insertion operator, end l. That's it. End l is nothing but a way of ending that line. Going to new line. See here. Output will be a same. Just a second. I gave an end one. You have to give an end l. Okay. Output will be a C. So, with this, I explained you about the output function. So, next we'll jump into a next topic called C++ comments. C++ comments. Comments can be used to explain a C++ code and to make it more readable. It can also be used to prevent the execution when testing alternative code. Comments can be a single-lined or a multi-lined comments. 
सिंगल लाइन कॉमेंट सिंगल लाइन कॉमेंट स्टार्ट विद टू फॉरवर्ड स्लैशेस आई विल जस्ट गो बैक टू जीनियर डॉट आईओ एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू सिंगल लाइन कॉमेंट्स विल बी अ स्टार्टिंग लाइक दिस लाइक दिस इट्स अ टू फॉरवर्ड स्लैशेस any text which you are read uh, any text between this forward slashes and the end of the line is ignored is being ignored by the compiler that is it will not get executed this example uses as a single line comment where i'll be just writing something over here see here this is a comment i'll just run the code See, it is being ignored by the compiler. It will not get executed because it is a com comment. This example is a single line comment. Next, we'll go to a multi-line comment. Over here, I'll just show you how the multi-line comments will work. Like when after this is simple, you have to give write something like this: the code above. will print a hello world or something like that whatever you want and while closing just give as the symbol and the slash over here run the code it will be completely ignored by the compiler because it is a multi line comment or a comment i hope you understood now let us dive into our next topic called c++ variables Variables are the container for storing the data value. In C++, there are different type of variable defined with the different keywords. For example, integer. I'll just tell you first. I'll just explain briefly. Later, I can give you few examples. Integer. Integer stores an integer value, which should be always a whole number without a decimal point, such as a One twenty-three or minus one twenty-three. Next comes a double stores a floating point number with the decimal, such as nineteen point nine nine or a minus nineteen point nine nine. Character character stores a single character, such as a E or a B. It can be capital or it can be a caps or a lower case or upper case anything. Character values are surrounded by a single quotes. Next comes a string. string stores a text such as a hello world string values are surrounded by a double quotes character value are stored while writing character you enclose in a single quotes while writing a string it should be enclosed within the double quotes next one is a bool stores a value with the two states either it can be true or it can be false i'll explain about a declaration of variable or creating a variable let's jump into a senior.io I'll just first delete this. Okay. So first will be a syntax. I'll write first. You have to type what type of data it is. Later, variable name is equal to value. Whatever value you're taking. Where type is one of the C plus plus types, such as an integer or floating point, whatever it is, and variable is a name of the variable, such as a x. You can give x or a y, whatever it is. The equal to sign is used to assign a value to the variable. To create a variable that should store a number, look at the following example. I'll just give you example. Int my num. Is equal to a fifteen semicolon. Creating a variable called my num over here of type integer and assigning it to the value of fifty. You can later print it like this. See out my num semicolon. Just delete the syntax I have written. 
close this. Now run the code and check. Output will be a 15 because it's printing the value whatever I have given. This is declaring a single variable. Now I'll be explaining you a declaring a many variable. How to declare a many variable? To declare a more than one variable of the same type, use a comma separated list. Comma separated list in the sense, let me just int x comma first x is equal to a 5. y is equal to a 6, z is equal to whatever you value you want, you just give that value. While printing, now you think that you need to add all this x plus y plus z. Let me run the code now. You can see output will be a 50 plus 5 plus 6, so it will be a 61. I hope you understood. Let us dive into a next topic of C++ identifiers. All C++ variable must be identified with a unique names. These unique names are called as identifier. Identifiers can be short names like a X and a Y or more descriptive name like a age, sum, total value, value, all, um, area, it can be anything. I'll give you one example. For example, I'll just write over here below itself. Int. Minute per hour. So this is kind of identifier. I'm giving this a value 60 over here. Minute per hour will be a 60. No? It's not that easy to understand, but it's just a naming, nothing else. General rules for constructing the names for a variable that are identified. I'll tell you a few rules. Just remember the rules. That's it. Name can obtain a letter. Name can contain a letter, digit or an underscore. Name must always begin with a letter or an underscore. It can start with a letter, underscore. And names are a case sensitive. Case sensitive in the sense, see here. My variable, my where. And a my where. So, I have written a to my where over here. So, what's the difference between these both? Both the my variable are different. One is a V capital, other one is a V small. So, it should always be case sensitive. Case sensitive in the sense both should be always similar. Names cannot contain a white space or a special character like exclamatory, hash, modulus, symbol. It cannot contain these. Reserved word like a C++ keyword such as a int, else, if, these cannot be used as a name. These are the rules of the variable. Now let me explain you about the constant. What is constant? As name itself indicate here we cannot change the value once it is stored. When you do not want others to overwrite the existing value, use the const keyword. This will declare the variable as a constant, which means unchangeable. It is just read only. For example, const is a keyword int minute per r is equal to a 60. For example, one more const. These are all the unchangeable value. You can't change. Pi is equal to 3.14. Once you have stored or assigned the value, it should be the similar. And I didn't explain you guys the C++ user input, how you will take. Just output I have explained that is a C out. Now I'll just explain you about the input. First let me delete this. Okay, you have already learned that Cout is used to output to the value or print the value. Now we will use a C in to get the user input. 
C in is a predefined variable that reads the data from the keyboard with an extraction operator. In the following example, I'll be writing now, the user can input a number which is stored in the variable x. We print the value of x. For example, take int x. C out. Type a num. Type a number and press a enter, whatever it is. Next one, C in. X, you are taking the input here. Get a user input from the keyboard, from the keyboard. You can just write according to your wish, okay, doesn't matter. Your number is. X is your number. So display the input value. This is how do you take input. I hope you understood. Now I'll just explain you a creating the simple calculator. How to create a simple calculator. First let me write the program over here. X is equal to 5 y is equal to 6 okay take any two variable int sum is equal to a 0 initially how should be the output output will be taken as c out or a sum is equal to a x plus y calculator in the you can't if you didn't give 0 also it will work sum is equal to x plus y print the output you can take a user input also sum is sum let me run the code and show you simple addition operation outer output will be a 11 so let uh, now let's go to the next topic of c plus plus data type as explained in the variable concept, a variable in C++ must be a specified data type. It can be integer, floating, double, character, boolean, string, anything. First, let me give a few examples. Later, I will go into a types of data type. Let us go into a platform. First, let me just erase it and I will give an example over here itself. First one will be an integer. Integer minus is equal to 5. This is an integer whole number thing. Next one will be a float. My float number is equal to a 5.09. This is a floating point number. Next comes a double. These are all the data type which I am explaining. My double num is equal to a 9.98. Floating point number same. Both the float and double will be a same itself. Next one will be a character. Cat. My letter is equal to enclosed within the single quotes like this. Character. Next one will be a boolean. Either it should be a true or false. My boolean is equal to a true or a false. Next will be a string one. String my text is equal to enclosed within a double quotes. Do not forget it. Hello. So these are all the general. Whichever you want to use always you need to use. These are the important ones. Now I will explain you the type of data type. First one will be a basic data type. The data type specifies the size and type of information the variable will store. So, data type will be integer, float, double, boolean, character, all this. I have already explained it to you. Integer will be whole number without decimal. Float will be a decimal which stores a decimal. Double will be a stores of fractional numbers. 
containing one or more decimal point until, until 15 decimal point it stores. In the float until 7 decimal digit it stores. Boolean stores either a true or false character stores a single character letter or a number or ASCII value. Numeric types. Use a int when you need to store a whole number without a decimal like 35,000 and float or double when you have a decimal value. Just you can print and check also if you need I'll just print and show it to you. I have given integer as a 5. See out. Print a minor. You can just check the output and for the float also. First, I let me show you for this. Run the code. It's error is showing because I have taken only for this. Let me delete this now. Run the code. You can see the output as a file. Same way you can check for the floating as a, and a double as well. Float versus a double. What is the difference between a float and double? I'll tell you. See here. First, let me take example over here. Float minum is equal to 5.75. See out minum this. For the double, minum is equal to anything. You can take 19.99. See out. Minum. Run the code. Just a second. Let me see what will be the... Here it should be a equal to okay. Let me check individual one. Same variable you can't declare again and again. Okay, here's a five point seven five you got. The precision of a floating point value indicates how many digits the value can have after this decimal point. Precision of float is only 6 or 7 decimal point, while the double variable have a precision of about a 15 digit. Therefore, it is safer to use a double for most calculation. Boolean type. A Boolean data type is declared with a bool keyword and can take only true or false. When the value is written, it will be either true is equal to 1 or false is equal to a 0 according to wish. I'll just give you one example. Boon is coding fun is equal to a true. I'll just assign it to a true value over here. Now print it. C out is coding fun. Run the code. Yeah, you got both are same. So you got to return the value. It's a true one. So character type. Character data type is used to store a single character. The character must be surrounded by single quotes like this. Character must always be surrounded by single quotes. It can be a like this. Example, I'll just give you one example directly itself. Car. My grade is equal to a B semicolon. C out my grade semicolon run the code. You can see the B as the output. Same way you can do it for the numbers also. Alternately, you can use ASCII value for the A, it's a 65, for B, it's a 66, for the C, it's a 67. 
string types now the string type is used to store a sequence of character or a text this is not a built in type but it, but it behaves like one in most of the basic usage string value should always be surrounded by double quotes for example i'll give you one val example now string greeting is equal to a hello output greeting semicolon to use a string you must always include an additional header file in the source code that is a string library over here you need to use additional this thing called string library hash include string dot h or a string run the code i didn't give a closing flower braces just a second you can see hello is getting printed so this is all about the data type i hope it's clear let us go to a next topic called c++ operator operators are used to perform a operation on a variables and a value I'll just give you a few example over here. I already explained it to you, but still I'll give you. I'll just delete the string header file over here. Int x is equal to hundred plus fifty. So over here. Although the plus operator is often used to add together two value, like in the example here, it can also be used to add together a variable and a value. It can add one as a variable, one and a value, or a an variable and another variable. So see what I was telling is here like this: int uh, take the sum one is equal to a x whatever answer you are getting above plus 250 like this so this is how c++ divides the operator into following group arithmetic operator assignment operator comparison operator bitwise logical so all the five types arithmetic assignment comparison logical bitwise first will be arithmetic operator i'll explain you briefly arithmetic operator are used to perform a common mathematical uh, calculation like uh, addition subtraction multiplication division modulus all this assignment operator assignment operator are used to assign a value like for example it should be equal to you are assigning something x is equal to what 10 like this so i have given example now here we assign the we use the assignment operator equal to to assign the value of 10 to the variable called x so there are few more assignment operator it can be a like this it can be a like this sorry so many more assignment operator are there multiplication equal to division equal to equal to all these are assignment operator plus equal to which means it will first add then equate for example x is like this see here i'll give you example x plus 3 is like this it will be there how does it simplify you can simplify it as x is equal to x plus 3 like this next will be comparison operator 
comparison operator are used to compare two values. The return value of a comparison operator will either be a true or a false. I'll show you. First, let me delete this. Comparison, it can be greater than, lesser than, equal to, greater than, equal to, lesser than, equal to. I'll just give you one example. Int x is equal to 5, int y is equal to a 3. And see out, print the output. x is greater than y. It should return a 1 because here x is greater than 1. Now uh, why? Let's see. It's showing the error because here I should give semicolon. Run the code. Yeah, it is returning a value 1. It returns a 1 that is a true because 5 is greater than 3. So list of comparison operator can be a, like this. Equal to equal to. Not equal to, greater than, lesser than, greater than, equal to, and lesser than, equal to, and many more. Next comes a logical operator. So, logical operator are used to determine the logic between the variables or of values. For example, here few logical operator are there. This is a logical AND operator. And this is a logical OR operator. This is a logical NOT operator. Logical AND return a true if both the statement are true. Logical OR return true if one of the statement is true. Logical NOT reverse the result returns a false if the result is true. It will be a reverse of the question. So with this operator let us go to a next concept called C++ strings. A strings are used for storing a text. String variable contains a collection of characters surrounded by double quotes. Create a variable of type string and assign it to a value. I showed you about a greeting one. I'll show you again. So, to use a string, you must always include a string library as I told you. Let us go, to, go into our platform now. First, let me delete this everything from here. Include a string library. Hash include string like this. Okay. So, first will be a like this. You can write normal one. String. Greeting is equal to hello semicolon. You can print a greeting. Output will be a obtained. See out greeting semicolon. Run the code. Hello will be obtained over right side. Now comes the string concatenation. The plus operator can be used between the string to add them together. Concatenation means adding a two different word or two different string to make a single new string. I'll just start now. Start by giving example. Observe carefully. String first name equal to John. String second name equal to D J. Now concatenation string equal to string full name equal to First name plus concatenation symbol second name like this. 
print a full name whatever you have taken like this print a full name let me run the code see you can see if you want one gap you can give a gap over here like this output will be like this next comes append function String in a C++ is actually an object which contain a function that can perform a certain operation on string. You can also concatenate string with the append function. I'll tell you how to concatenate. Everything will be the same over here. Delete this part from here. String full name is equal to first name dot append second name or a last name whatever you have given like this display the full name run the code don't give the gap and check like this append function will also be the same so i hope you understood about the string uh, concatenation and append one c++ numbers and a string c++ uses the plus operator for both the addition and concatenation numbers are added and string are concatenated if you add a two number the result will be two and uh, result will be a number if you add a string the result will be a string concatenation i showed you by giving an example next comes a string length function to get the length of the string use the length function let me show you one example over here first let me delete this string text is equal to a b c d e f g whatever you want give like this with the semicolon next will be a c out the length of the string is length of the string is text whatever you have given over variable there dot size or you can use a length also i'll use a length both are one and the same i'll show you that also semicolon run the code is a 12 correct right i'll give a size over here it will also be a c you can see if i'll add one more over here you have to see a 13 now 13 yes so this is how it works accessing string you can access the characters in a string by referring to its index number inside the square bracket i'll just give you one example now okay string give something like my string or whatever you want is equal to hello hello output will be a like i need to see by using index na i'll give a index first index will always be a zero run the code wait here s will be a capital it will give a e h after h second one will be e na first one will be zero always so first index will always be zero then one then two so last index will always be n minus 1 
So next to change a string character, to change the value of a specific character in a string, refer to the index number and use a single quotes. I'll show you how to change a string one. I've taken this. Now I'll take my string as well the capital. My string of z, I mean zero is equal to i'll give a j now i need to change always remember to give it in a single quotes later output the my string just my string to change to change the letter output will be jello because h of the zero index i replaced it with the j However, while taking the, you can take the input from the user also. It's according to your wish. I have taken it directly. Now, I'll explain you about the C++ string namespace. You might see some C++ programs that runs without the standard namespace. I have used the using namespace STD now without using library, that library. Using namespace std line can be omitted and replaced with the standard keyword followed by a this operator over here, two colon, followed by this operator for string. I'll give you one example how you can replace it. Directly take int main without using namespace Okay, std, like this two colon, string, greeting, is equal to, hello, std, say out, greeting return zero you can run the code hello will be printed without using namespace i have done that now c++ math c++ has a mini function that allow you to perform a mathematical task on number for example max and a min Max of x, y function can be used to find the highest value of x and a y. I'll show you. Delete this. Max. First directly take the printing thing only. Max of maximum of 5, 10. You will get the output. Close the flower braces. Run the code. Okay, yeah. using namespaces to Again, it's giving the error. Let me check. Okay, you have to include a math over here. Okay, I forgot to include a math header. Here you have to include a math header. Delete the string header. Use a math header. C math. You need to include this. Now you can run the code. Still it's giving error. Let me check. The error was I have taken a comma over here, uh, a dot over here, make it a comma, check which is a max, 10 will be a max. If you take a minimum, it will give a minimum value of these both. 5 will be a minimum value, you can see that. So later, few more math functions are there like a square root, SQRT and a round value which rounds a number and log that is a natural logarithm. I'll just write over here itself. C out S Q R T of square root of you need to find the square root of some number. I'll give a 64, it should be 8. 
later c out of around rounding the value 2.6 run the code it's because i didn't give a endl over here first one answer will be a 5 second will be a you can give an endl over here even here run the code okay If the end end doesn't work, you can give a new line also. This math function will give the output square root of 64 around or whatever it is. Next one will be a C++ boolean which I already explained you. Boolean values can be either a true or false. True will be a 1 and false will be a 0. So now let's let's next jump into a conditional statement C++ conditions. C++ supports the usual logical condition from mathematics lesser than less than equal to greater than greater than equal to not equal to you can use this condition to perform a different action for a different decision making. C++ has the following conditional statement use if to specify a block of code to be executed if a specified condition is true use else block to specify a block of code to be executed if the condition is false use else if to specify a new condition to be tested if the first condition false use a switch statement to specify many alternative block of code to be executed First, let us discuss about the if statement. We are using if statement to specify a block of C++ code to be executed if the condition is true. I'll just give example. Let me first delete the math thing over here. Okay. So, as I told you, if statement will execute only when the condition is true. I'll take one example if 20 is greater than 18. I'm checking whether the 20 is greater than 18 or not. If 20 is greater than 18, output 20 is greater than Great 20 is greater than the 10. So you have to display this, give a semicolon, run the code. So if it's greater, it will display. See, first what happens here, the condition is being checked whether the 20 is greater than 10, uh, 10 or 18, whatever it is. It's 18. So give 18 over here. Hmm? It checks the condition whether the 20 is greater than 18. So 20 is greater, so this will get executed. If 20 is not greater, no output will get executed. Directly the cursor comes down, control will come down. In the example above, I'll explain it to you once again. Just listen to me carefully. And one more thing, I, we can give variable also. Instead of 20 and 18, just initialize variable int x is equal to 20, y is equal to 18, give x and y in the place of this. So now comes the else statement. Use the else statement to specify a block of code to be executed if the condition is false. Nothing will be a uh, changes, nothing will be uh, here, just a else block will get added else, whatever you want to print. See here. something whatever it is whatever you want just type it now i'll just give the number 11 over here so output will be in the whatever present in the else condition will get executed when the condition is false else condition will get executed next will be a else if condition else if condition so 
use the else if condition to specify a new condition if the first condition is false. Whenever the first condition is false, we are using else if condition to make it work. I'll write it. First, let me delete this one. Let me take int time is equal to a 22 if if time is lesser than 10 whenever the time is lesser than 10 display a good morning double quotes good morning after that just close this i mean you already closed it come down take a else if condition else if of when time is lesser than 20 open the parenthesis whatever you want to print i want to print see out good day Next will be a else if is done. Here next will be a else statement. Else, whenever the other both the thing is wrong, it will display a both the thing returns to be a false. It will display a for good evening like this. Now let me run. So it will display good evening because both the condition turns to be a false. In the above example, the time 22 is greater than 10. So the first condition is false. Next condition in the else if statement is also false. So we move on to the else condition. Since the condition 1 and condition 2 both are false, print the next one in the else that is a good evening. If the time was 14, what happens? Whenever the time was 14, what happens? Our program will turn to be a good day. Next one, shorthand else. that is a ternary operator condition. There, there is also a shorthand else, which is also known as ternary operator because it consists of three operand. It can be used to replace a multiple lines of code with a single line. Instead of writing a three to four line, you can just write it in a single line. It is often used to replace a same, simple if else statement. I'll just show you how to write. So you saw me writing this if else earlier. Now I'll write it in a single line like this. Time is equal to 14 or whatever it is. If you need just 20, I'll make it 20. After that, I'll take a string over here. Result is equal to time. Ternary operator. Time is lesser than 18. So this is a checking the condition, whether the time is lesser than 18. Here there will be a question mark in the syntax. If the time is greater than uh, 18, display a good day over here. Colon. Next, else, if the condition get false, display a good evening over here with the semicolon. Go down. So this is how it works and output the result. See out result semicolon run the code. See, good evening. So this is how it works. Next we'll go to a switch statement. Switch expression is Evaluated once, the value of the expression is compared with the value of the each keys. If there is a match, the associated block of code is executed. The break and default keyword are optional and will be described later. I'll show you one example for this. I'll be showing you an example.
So, output will be a day 4. Day 4 in the sense it should be a Thursday because case 4 will get executed. Let's see. Thursday will get executed. So, first give uh, some variable, give some value and test the, uh, give the cases. If the case 1 is, it should display this and break the statement. If you didn't use a break, what happens? It will be keep on displaying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If it's now, uh, it's a Thursday, okay? You will not give a break over here. So, it will be keep on displaying the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever is there, it will be keep on displaying like this. So, it's very necessary to break the statement. It will give an error state error. Just a second, let me check. So, it might give error. Somewhere. Okay, uh, parenthesis is missing. Run the code. See, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is displaying. So, the break keyword, when C++ reaches a break keyword, it breaks out of the switch block. It comes out. This will stop the execution of more code and case testing inside the block. Whenever the match is found and the job is done, it's time for the break statement. There is no need, no more need for testing. Next one is a loops. Loops can execute a block of code as long as a specified condition is reached. Loops are a handy because they save time, reduce the error and they make a code more readable. So first let us discuss about a while loop. Later we'll go to a do while loop and a for loop. Let me explain with an example. While loop, while loop, while loop, uh, what does it? It goes through a block of code as long as specified condition is true. Until the condition gets true, it will be keep on repeating. I'll just give you one example. Int i is equal to a 0 semicolon. While, check for the condition. While i is lesser than 5. This is one condition. I am checking some condition over here. What happens? Whenever the condition is true, if the condition gets true, you need to display i value. Backward slash n is necessary. Semicolon i plus plus. So, it will display a continuous number now. See what will be the output. Output will be a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The code in the loop will run over and over again as long as a variable i will be a lesser than 5. First 0 will be displayed, later incremented 1. 1 is lesser than 5. Yes, 1 is printed until 5 is lesser than 5. Condition get false and comes out of the loop. Do while loop. Do while loop is a variant of the while loop. This loop will execute the code block once at least before checking if the condition is true. Then it will repeat the loop as long as the condition is true. Only change will be a over here. Just a second. Do. Semicolon. Like this. This will be the condition. First initialize to a 0. Take a do. Print a i. So before checking, the condition will be at the last. So before checking the condition itself, once the, this will be printed. For example, I will give a 6 over here. This is how it works. Next comes a for loop. When you know exactly how many times you want to loop through a block of code, use the for loop instead of while loop. So, here, okay, just a second. Let me type something. 
This is the syntax of a for loop. Statement 1 is executed one time before the execution of code block. Statement 2 defines the condition for executing the code. Statement 3 is executed every time after the code blocks has been executed. I'll give you one example to show. For loop int, I'll take a int as a variable, will be a 0. I'll check for the condition, whether it's lesser than this. Then take a semicolon, I'll increment increment or decrement according to your wish and print whatever you want to print. See out, I want to print the number i backward slash n to go to next line. Just run the code now. Number will be from 0 to 2. Statement 1 sets a variable before the loop starts. Int i is equal to 0. Statement 2 over here defines the condition for the loop to run. It should be a lesser than 5. If the condition is true, the loop will start to run over and again, over and over again. If it is false, the loop will end. Statement 3 increases a value i++ plus plus each time the code block in the loop has been executed. Okay, now let us go to a next one that is a break and continue statement. So, you have already seen the break statement used in the earlier uh, switch thing. It was used to jump out of the switch statement. Break statement can also be used to jump out of a loop. I'll give you one example to explain the break and continue statement. Before explaining, I'll explain you the continue as well. Continue statement breaks a one iteration in the loop. If a specified condition occurs and continues with the next iteration in the loop, it will skip. It will basically skip. Break will come. Uh, come uh, break will jump out of the loop. Continue will skip the particular condition. Let us go to a senior.io. I'll just write a break statement over here for just a second. I had written for an earlier. Let it be. Take a for statement for int i is equal to 0, i is lesser than 10, i plus plus given a value like this okay uh -huh. here check for the condition if i equal to equal to 4 if i equal to equal to 4 then what you will do you will just break the statement and over here, outside this, printer C out. I mean printer I. Run the code. So whenever, until a 4, whenever 4 comes, it will break. Until the 4, it will be a keep on displaying for the continue also see the difference between here i'll give a continue over here it will display till 9 why is this happening because until the 4 see only the 4 condition will get skipped when i0 will get displayed, 1, 2, 3 is this. When it comes to 4, this condition will get just skipped. That's it. So, except 4, all the conditions are being displayed. So, next let us jump into the arrays. Arrays are used to store multiple values in a single variable. 
instead of declaring the separate variable for each value, we can just store everything in one. To declare an array, define the variable type, specify the name of the array, followed by a square bracket and specify the number of element it should store. I'll just give you an example. For example, string cars square bracket give the value 4 or whatever. We have now declared a variable that holds an array of 4 string. To insert a value to it, we can use an array, array literal, place the values in a comma separated list inside the curly braces. If you want to give some value, take a equal to, take a curly braces and you have to put it in the like this. Olvo. Done. Close it. Comma. Again, take this. BMW. Close it. Like this. Whatever number of thing you need, just later close the flower bracket and do this. Later, you can print using the indices like this. See out. Cars of 0. What should be printed now? Cars. Run the code. Olvo will be printed because the first indices will be a Olvo. Array indexes will start with the 0. 0 is the first element. 1 is the second element. Don't forget this. So, you can change the array element according to your wish. As I explained you in the string, same way here also you can change the array element. Later, this is all about the array. Let us jump into the next topic called creating a reference. A reference variable is a reference to an existing variable and it is created with an ampersand operator. I will explain you with an example. I will just delete this over here. Uh, what do you call? Take a string. Food is equal to a pizza. Okay, semicolon. After that, take string ampersand meal. Is equal to food. Semicolon. Print a Put backward slash and like this next C out mail so this will be the output of the pizza and this will be output of the pizza both will be output of pizza see the difference we can either use a variable name food or the reference name meal to refer to the food variable so both will be a pizza only one and not only both are same so once the reference is done now we'll go to a next topic called pointers you learned from the previous uh, chapter that we can get the memory address of a variable by using ampersand operator. I gave you example of pizza. So over there the food variable of type string. Pointer however is a variable that stores a memory address as its value. Pointer variable points to a data type like the integer or a string of the same type and is created with the asterisk operator. The address of the variable you are working with is assigned to a point. I will just explain you with an example so that you will get a clear idea. Okay. Over here. Wait a second. 
string food is equal to pizza over here you can just take a pointer as i'm explaining the concept of pointer as there is this pay tr is equal to a ampersand foot semicolon okay once it's done now this is a food variable of type string, a pointer variable with the name PTR that shows the address of the food. I'm just printing the output of food over here and over here. Ampersand food. Like this. You can just display the pointer one also. Run the code. See, you can see like this. Creating create a pointer variable with the name PTR that points to a string variable over here. By using asterisk symbol, note that the type of pointer has to match the type of variable you're working with. Use the ampersand symbol. Use the ampersand symbol to store the memory address of the variable called food and assign it to pointer. Now pointer holds the value of food's memory address. So this is how. Here are the addresses. First will be a direct output. Next, we'll go to a C++ reference is done. Now, it's a C++ D reference. C++ D reference is nothing but getting a memory address and a value. In the example which I showed earlier, we used a pointer variable to get a memory address of variable. However, you can also use a pointer to get the value of the variable by using the asterisk symbol. That's a dereference operator over here, similar to pointer only. Let us go into a zenia.io platform. Over here, first I'll take a string as a food and given pizza pointer variable with a pointer declaration. Print a pointer. Wait, no need of this both. Print a pointer over here. Later, see out with the asterisk symbol. Print the pointer. So, this will be the first one, will be the line 9. Line 9 will be the output, the memory address of food with the pointer. It will give an address. Line 10. It will be output the value of the food with a pointer that is a pizza. Asterisk symbol can be confusing but as it does a two different thing in your code. When used in a declaration part it creates a pointer variable. When not used in a declaration it acts as a dereference variable. I am just run the code. See first one will give a address and later which is whichever is pointing will give a pizza. I hope it's clear. So that's all about the C++ tutorial. I hope you like this. I hope you like the session. If any doubts or any questions, you can drop in the comment section. Thank you.